viewers should always seek advice from a professional before attempting these rules. Most of the millions of dogs in the UK have developed a natural bond with their owners. With training, they become dependable best friends. But when things go wrong, it's usually because dog and owner have got their wires crossed. Oi! Kendall Shepherd is one of the UK's leading dog behaviourists, whose work has rewritten the textbook for handling dangerous dogs. When we see aggression as a behaviour problem, there is something gone fundamentally wrong in the communication between that dog and its owner. Kendall is going to show us three simple rules that are going to help you train your dangerous dog. So we're going to say sit. Good. These rules are universal and designed to help dogs that won't behave, no matter what their size. Um, I have three children. This is Freddie, he's my youngest. Um, he's very boisterous. And on top of having a boisterous baby, I've got two staffies. They're lovely family dogs. But as soon as we go out, Blue is like a completely different dog. If I walk with the buggy, literally, he attacks the buggy. He will actually bite the seat of the buggy where the baby is. Blue. Blue! Well, the first time he bit me, he jumped up several times trying to get in my face, but I pushed him away, hence the reason he got my arm. He's still got a lump on and swollen. I am frightened. He has actually scratched them before when he's jumped up, and it's just a case of if he was to bite one of them, how he's bit me, he would break their arm. You know, I need it fixed because of this is literally a last resort. I'd, I'd, I'd think he needs to be rehomed. Jade is at a crossroads with Blue. So she's asked Kendall to see if she can help with the strange buggy biting behaviour. It may surprise people how often we give the maximum amount of attention to behaviours that actually we don't like, such as jumping up at the door, which is commonly rewarded by people saying hello, patting the dog, or, of course, somebody getting angry with the dog. So we are accidentally reinforcing behaviours that actually become a behaviour problem. Jade's attempt to stop Blue biting the buggy has made the problem worse. Blue. Blue, right. hang on then. Let's let's be a little, little bit. We need to think now. What we what we mustn't do. We, we're not going to react to anything he does. We've got to make this not a big deal. You see, because I think the way it's escalated, it's been made a deal. Yeah. You know? Okay. He starts to get excited. We're just going to stop. We need to ask him to do something else. Yeah. yeah. What we really should try to do is actually teach an, an appropriate alternative behaviour, such as, for example, to sit. Sit. Lovely. Good boy. So you're going to get a bit of confidence in being able to yeah. show him what to do, yeah? It's going well. And after just 10 minutes, Kendall is confident enough to try it with Freddy in the buggy. No. Blue. Lovely. Good boy. That's lovely. What's this? OK, and just ask him to sit. 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 I'm feeling a lot more positive, to be fair. I feel like we have got... I've learned quite a bit, to be fair, and I feel when it comes to the buggy, I think we've turned a bit of a corner. Now that I know how to kind of control him... That's lovely. Very good sit. What a good sit that is, eh? After four years living with a family, Will, a bull mastiff cross, was taken to the dog home when he started becoming aggressive. After two years here, no one is prepared to take the risk and give him a new home. He can be a dog, I'm told, who's difficult to read, which can increase the potential for danger if a dog doesn't give a lot of warning signs. 
He's described as being uh, very distrustful of humans. He may actually attempt to bite. Uh, I've brought with me my normal head collar, which is essential for um, controlling the head of a large dog. And of course, the essential ingredient, which is food. But not just to feed the dog with it, but actually use it in a rather more sophisticated way to engage the dog's brain. Only the people working here at his kennels are prepared to take him outside his cage for a walk. So it's time for Kendall to work her magic. What you gonna do? Good, well done, you decided for yourself. Good. Rewarding good behavior with food and turning away from bad Kendall is using Will's natural obedience to make him think. So we're taking the brain from just the reacting to me as a stranger state, but we're moving it into a brain which is actually thinking. And obedience commands, known commands, are great emotional stabilizers. So when he was sitting for me, and when he was giving me paw, he was not just being obedient, but he was in a much better emotional state than he is when he's behind bars barking and lunging and jumping up. Kendall has shown that Will can learn to keep his aggressive behavior in check. Hopefully, it'll convince someone to give him a home. Meet Romeo, a two-year-old chihuahua. I bought him from a young couple, and I suppose I noticed a problem the next day. He actually did bite my hand quite badly, um, and he did draw blood on my thumb, and that's when I thought, whoops. <laughs> my friends are really frightened to come into the house. Like, if my friends do come round, they'll have to run up the stairs and avoid the dog so he doesn't bite their ankles. Come on, come on. Come on, good boy. My biggest fear is that he's going to bite a child um, because children see a cute, sweet little chihuahua and they think, oh, that's lovely, and they go to grab him. And I have questioned parents before that if it was a Rottweiler, would they allow their children to run up and try and put their hand around its neck? Um, and it's no different for a chihuahua, to be honest. It's still going to bite. <laughs> Hello, come here. That's not very loving, Romeo, is it? Hello, little chappy. Kendall's first instinct is to try to redirect Romeo's attention. Good. It looks like Romeo is going to need more than food to keep his mouth shut. And so Kendall has a plan for some tough love. What I'd actually like to see, what will he do if you both just move away from him now? While he's barking at me or the guys here, right? I'd like to see what he does when you simply move away from him. Let's just see what he does. I want to see what he does. OK. Is he allowed upstairs? Yes. He's just standing still, he's just considering what to do. Um, this is probably the first time you've actually walked away from him while he's been barking and behaving aggressively. Yeah. And he's really thinking now about consequences. He's thinking, well, what did I do? Now he's just having a little lie down, OK? So you can come back to him now and say, good lie down. What a good lie down, Romeo. OK, good, and now he's happy boy, OK? So we didn't use food there as the reward. OK. You moved away. Yeah. As the we don't like that kind of behaviour, Romeo. Yeah. Okay. I'm moving away. I'm not going to be here like the cavalry behind you. Okay. And then you came back to him when he decided to behave in an appropriate way. Yeah. It's just like saying, you know, sorry, you can't have your lollipop unless you do your homework. Yeah. It's as yeah. simple as that. You walk away. You re you deprive him of your attention. Yeah. And that is an extremely effective 
punishment. Yeah. When you arrived this afternoon, I didn't think he'd be sat in the same room as you all, nice and calm. Um, I think he's done really well as you, Romy. And looking forward to taking it forward and uh, having a nice, calm dog. By following these simple rules, you should see a noticeable change in your dog's behaviour. And hopefully, with some consistent training from their owners, our three dogs won't be dangerous for much longer.